into the small and mid cap show i'm hiral dadia let's quickly take a look at how markets are panning at this hour uh, clearly it's the last trading day of 2023 uh, you are seeing cuts of almost around 3 tenths of a percent coming in there in terms of uh, nifty 50 is concerned let's pull up bank nifty as well because that, there you've seen some indecisive moves that have continued uh, overall if you see in terms of bank nifty you are seeing cuts of around 6 tenths of a percent coming in on that front as well uh, overall if you see in terms of the broader markets let's pull up the mid cap and the small cap index and see what that is indicating 3 tenths of a percent higher in terms of mid cap 150 and if you see in terms of the small cap index one tenth of a percent is the kind of gains the advanced decline ratio absolutely favoring the declines on nifty 50 let's see what's putting pressure bpcl ongc so it's the oil and gas pack which is down in trade let's pull up a BP, uh, hpcl also and see what that is doing in trade in today's session because yesterday's session you did have a hpcl which was actually up around 10 percent and today now we are seeing some bit of profit booking that is coming in there uh, sbi under pressure coal india as well it was the topic of motila loswal for 2024 so some smart moves in yesterday's session profit booking coming in today as well kotak mahindra bank is under pressure Tata Motors, six and a half percent up move on that stock. An interesting one to watch out for in today's day of trade. I think the reason why it's up is something that we need to see. In fact, all Tata Group companies, Tata Consumers is up three and a half percent. Tata Steel is up one and a half percent. And you have Tata Coffee as well, which is seeing some smart moves. But that's on the merger news uh, and the demerger, the entire restructuring that we're looking at between Tata Consumer as well as Tata Coffee. But Tata Motors does catch the limelight. Adani Enterprises, Adani Ports, both the group companies is also up in trade to the tune of almost one to one and a half percent let's look at what the broader markets are doing in trade now overall if you go to see uh, the, the cuts are there but clearly Surya Roshni 15 to 16 percent up move Kalpataru projects is up nine and a half percent on the back of an order win KPI green continues the upward momentum nine percent up move coming in on that one Godrej Industries is seeing some smart moves go colors is under pressure Shilpa Med is under pressure India Mart is another the one which is seeing cuts in today's day of trade so overall clearly from a market perspective uh, you are seeing a lot of stock specific action in trade today but clearly uh, no major cues emerging or no major directions that are emerging because if you see in terms of 2023 it has been an absolutely strong year now what 24 has in store from here on is what we need to wait and watch. Uh, we will be joined by the management of Cello World uh, and we will have NLC India who will be joining in. But before that, overall, if you go to see in terms of where uh, Kalpataru Power goes, uh, Kalpataru Project goes, that stock has been in focus, surged over 8% on the back of winning an international order worth 3,244 crore rupees. In fact, yesterday, my colleague had spoken to the management, that's uh, Amit Uplenchwar, on the order book execution and industry trends first let's listen into a bite of that conversation our order book currently the way the split stands is roughly 60 percent is coming from domestic markets and 40 percent is coming from international markets increasingly we want to take our other verticals and segments overseas as i mentioned uh, to you a little while ago and hopefully we should balance this to 50 50 in the next you know 12 to 24 months uh, and that's what our endeavor is Right, so that's a Kalpataru projects where uh, my colleague did speak to him and that move up move. Uh, which has continued in today's trading session. Uh, but apart from this, if you see in terms of a uh, few of the stocks that we need to highlight is the multi-baggers. Uh, let's pull up a few of them because if you see Zomato, let's pull up a one-year chart of Zomato and see what's happened on that front because clearly that has been one of the multi-baggers uh, that we have been watching out for. Smart moves uh, that have come in on a Zomato. Now let's understand what are the reasons for it. Uh, the stock has seen gains of the 2.2 times and the financials have improved two consecutive quarters of profitability that we've seen in terms of Zomato and they restarted the gold scheme and they have you know a lot of other positives that are working in their favor apart from that Hindustan Aeronautics is another one that we have been watching out for a strong order book execution has been absolutely strong and that's one of the reasons why you've seen such strong moves that have come in with regards to where Hindustan Aeronautics go now talking about the broader markets pfc rec have been an absolute power pack in 2023 uh, clearly the loan growth has been absolutely robust for both these counters uh, you have the
the growth which is driving because it's a 30% pat uh, that is going to be distributed as dividend as well on the back of the profitability we are seeing and an annualized PE of almost 7%. So this has been a power pack that we have been watching out for. But let's quickly shift focus to a cello. Now, interesting one, a recent listing in the making and the stock actually listed on the 6th of November though slightly under pressure from the listing date but let's see what's in store they have a capex of almost uh, 200 crore rupees and they've commissioned a glass fair green clean plant in Rajasthan as well. Uh, Mr. Gaurav Rathod, Joint Managing Director at Cello World, uh, joins in to discuss more. Uh, Gaurav, good morning and welcome to the show. Thank you, good morning. Uh, Gaurav, let's start with 2024. What's in store for the company? What are you aiming at? Because clearly, a lot of positives that have been highlighted from here on uh, with regards to capabilities. Right. I think, uh, so I think uh, growing, going forward, I think we have all the ingredients in place, uh, whether it's uh, the Greenfield project in Rajasthan uh, or the current expansion that we have had in our Opalware capacity as well. Uh, plus, you know, we're still at about a 75% utilization in most of our other, uh, you know, categories and segments as well. So I guess uh, the three ingredients are already there. Uh, this year, of course, has been slightly, slightly muted when it comes to consumer demand, uh, which, uh, you know, Diwali was, or the Diwali months were uh, pretty good. And, but post that again, it's been slightly slower. Uh, but, uh, you know, historically, the company has been growing at about 18 to 20%. So I guess this is just an aberration uh, when it comes to this year. Uh, but uh, I, I'm hoping that, you know, the next quarter itself, uh, we, we are, we'll be uh, seeing much better uh, consumer demand, uh, which we are seeing already signs of. So overall, Gaurav, if you see the revenue from 21 to 23, we've seen a CAGA growth of around 31%. Uh, right. Do you think that's something which is expected to continue or do you think that will be outperformed uh, if you have to consider 24 as well? No, so uh, 24 will not be an outperformer year. Uh, as I said, the consumer demand has been muted across uh, all consumer product lines. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, a sustainable growth that we have also uh, guided on is an 18 to 20% growth from year on for the next uh, couple of years uh, at least. Uh, 20, the previous years also had, uh, you know, the base effect and also the COVID effect. So I, that is why the percentage seems higher at about 30%. But a sustainable growth uh, for us uh, going forward is an 18 to 20 percent CAGR growth, which is, uh, you know, easily achievable. OK, uh, if you see in terms of the EBITDA margin trend, uh, it's been yeah. in that range of 26 and a half to almost 23 and a half. But 23 being the lowest, uh, yeah. when do you think you could be above the 25 percent margins, taking into consideration that the demand is slightly muted? So is that that there is going to be more discounting trends in the future? So I think the demand has been muted, but our margin profiles has actually improved uh, because a lot of, uh, you know, the, dem uh, the demand, we never pushed a lot uh, because in our subdued market, we kind of were able to retain some of the margins as well because there was a lot of softening in uh, raw material prices. So there has also been a lot of, uh, you know, uh, deflationary pressures on raw material and energy prices. And that is why our volume growth has been pretty good this year as well, but uh, the value growth has been lower. So I guess uh, going forward, uh, you know, we, we aim to maintain these markets uh, in this, uh, you know, range. Okay. Uh, moving from there on, if you see in terms of the segments, from consumer houseware to writing instruments and then molded furniture, the trend has been where you have consumer houseware, which is slightly on the increase. Writing instruments is on the increase, but as molded furniture is on the decrease. Uh, what is the mix expected to look like going ahead and what business is going to be further margin accretive? Right. So I think uh, you're right. Consumer uh, segment and the writing instrument segment will always be growing at a very healthy CAGR. Uh, the, right, the molded furniture mainly is dependent on raw material prices uh, because, and as I said, there has been a lot of softening in prices. So that is why you see uh, revenue being almost flat in that category. Uh, going, Of course, there are a lot of other pressures in that segment in terms of, uh, you know, unorganized competition. So there, our whole idea is to improve the mix, uh, which we are continuing to do. Uh, and, uh, you know, build more as a profit in that uh, particular uh, uh, segment will grow much faster than the revenues uh, because we are changing the mix a little bit. So you will see that over the next couple of years, 
uh, that we'll grow there, of course, at a, but not at about 18-20% in that category. It'll be a growth of about 8-10%. to 10%, uh, But uh, our margins will keep improving, uh, you know, year on year. Because the product mix will be uh, much better. Okay. And from a CAPEX perspective, one is the glass fire greenfield plant in Rajasthan, uh, likely to be commissioned in March 2024. Uh, overall, how much capacity are you adding? I think it's 20,000 tons of glassware. Uh, at peak utilization, how much revenues do you think you will be able to garner and by when do you see that? So, uh, the Rajasthan capacity is adding about 250 to 275 crores of additional uh, revenue possibilities. Uh, We hope to, you know, exhaust the capacity in a couple of years. So, that's uh, our expectation uh, from that particular plan. And with regards to where the Opalware, I mean, and this includes Opalware as well? No, it does not include Opalware. This is uh, purely a soda lime glass uh, facility, which is your clear glass, uh, drinking glasses. Okay, and what about Opalware then? Opalware, by the end of this year, we would be at about 70% utilization. And we hope to, again, exhaust that by uh, the next year. Okay. Uh, Now, apart from this, uh, clearly, you know, from the ROC perspective, it has been strong. Uh, From here on, how do you see the trajectory moving in? So I think a uh, sustainable ROC for us, uh, you know, uh, in the next couple of years or in the foreseeable future is in the range of about 30 to 35 percent, uh, which uh, we are very, uh, you know, confident of uh, maintaining over the next few years. Okay. And uh, from here, after this CAPEX, after that's done, you know, with regards to Opalware as well as the new glassware that's coming up in Rajasthan, what's the trajectory looking like with additional CAPEX, number one? And number two, what's that milestone you're looking to cross as a company? Uh, because that this will be one of the first post-listing. Right. So I think uh, basically in terms of uh, the capacities, uh, it's, uh, as I said, 18 to 20% growth uh, over the next few years is, you know, uh, very likely with the mix and the ingredients that we already have. Uh, though uh, the glassware capacity of is one of its kind. So I guess, uh, you know, that is why we want to exhaust it in the couple of years itself. And we are pretty confident that this capacity will be utilized. Uh, so I guess, uh, you know, from that perspective, uh, you know, uh, all the ingredients are in place and uh, we hope to grow at the figure that uh, you know we have guided for. Okay, and very lastly, in terms of profitability, uh, 150, yeah. 200, so every year we've seen a 50 crore kind of a jump. Do you think that could improve further? I think, uh, of course, uh, if the revenue increases at that percentage, uh, then it should, uh, the profit should increase, uh, you know, much faster. Uh, because we are adding glassware in capacity where the revenue, where the profit margins are also better. So as consumer wear uh, overall in our product mix, uh, the segment increases, our margins portfolio can also you know be better from here on. Right. So I think lots to watch out for going into 2024 as a year. Thank you, Gaurav, so much for speaking to us at NTTV Profit. So that's the management of Cello World, a consumer-driven brand. Now, how consumption plays out in the country is what we will see on this one as well. Though he clearly indicated that the demand has been slightly uh, muted and that could have a bearing with regards to FI24, which might not be a absolutely strong here. But moving on, let's quickly slip into a short break. Prasanna Kumar Mutupali, Chairman and MD at NLC India, will join us with their plans with 2024 and their upcoming projects and what execution is expected to look like. Please stay tuned and this is one of the multi-baggers of 2023.
welcome back you're watching the small and mid cap show now we have NLC India that is in focus it's a multi bagger of 2023 the kind of returns that you've seen on this counter that's going to be astounding if you pull up a 12 month chart there you go smart moves coming in on that one now we have Prasanna Kumar Muthupalli chairman and managing director of NLC India who joins in to tell us what's in store Prasanna good morning and welcome to the show Good morning, madam. Uh, Prasanna, my first question coming to you is clearly a lot of things that have worked in favor of NLC in 2023 that it's made a, a multi-bagger. Uh, what is it that you are watching out for in terms of 2024 for this, for the coming year also to be a multi-bagger for the company uh, from a business perspective? Uh, uh, thank you, madam. We are approaching the year 2024 with much optimism and uh, confidence. Uh, with the outstanding performance in uh, the calendar year 2023 in all the areas uh, we are we will be entering into 2024 and we are hopeful that we will be maintaining the performance levels in the year 2024 also uh, mainly because uh, uh, two three reasons uh, for that uh, we are going to commission our uh, gatampur thermal power station in the year 2024 with the first unit we are planning for the uh, month of January and subsequently the next two units also we will be commissioning in the calendar year 24. In addition to that, we are going to add 300 megawatt solar capacity in uh, Rajasthan that will also will come in uh, 2024 and we are going to award the Talavira thermal power station of 3, uh, 3 into 800 megawatt uh, in the first quarter of the financial year and also we are going to award the prestigious lignite to methanol project uh, in the uh, calendar year and also uh, as the uh, land problems we already sorted out uh, we are hopeful that in the year 2024 we will be performing better than 2023 and performing in all the uh, areas all right, so lots of projects uh, that are in the making, Prasanna, that we are watching out for. Now, with everything said and done, uh, from an execution perspective, and if you have to look at the total order book, where does the total order book for the company stand? And what's the execution timeline looking like for the same? As on date, we are a 6 gigawatt uh, uh, generating company. Uh, and 50 million metric ton uh, coal and lignite production company. We are targeting to become a 17 gigawatt company by 2030 and 82 million metric tons uh, uh, production by 2030. Uh, for the achieving this target, uh, all things are in line lined up. The Talabira Thermal Power Station we are uh, going to award in the month of January. Of it's almost 20,000 uh, crores uh, capex. And uh, one uh, two into six sixty megawatt uh, um, first lignite based uh, super critical thermal power station in the country. We are going to award in the calendar year two thousand twenty four and uh, take it forward. Uh, similarly, uh, the Pachwara South Coal Block, which is on the uh, advanced stage of starting the production, we will start the production uh, in the calendar year twenty four. So, with all these things and 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 uh, parallelly, we are ca adding the capacity aggressively in the renewables already two gigawatt capacity is in the pipeline so with all these things in uh, place we are hopeful that we will be achieving the target of 17 gigawatt by 2030 right so between mining thermal power renewable power and renewable energy with the kind of capacity increase that you have planned uh, how much do you think renewable power and renewable energy uh, overall as a portfolio will contribute do you think the uh, contribution to revenues will increase going ahead taking the government's thrust towards it but as on date our nlpl strength is a right proportion of renewable and thermal as on date we are having 24% of our capacity in renewables, we want to take it to uh, around more than 32% uh, shortly. So in line with that, we are giving more focus to the renewable capacity addition. But at the same time, we are giving equal importance to the thermal capacity addition also, because going forward, uh, a right balance is to be maintained to ensure that the demand of power supply for the country is met. Okay. And uh, from a CAPEX perspective, uh, you know, you have almost around 4,400-odd crores which is planned for diversification projects. Uh, how and, and another almost 82,000-odd crores or little more than that is for the other bids. 
how do you see all of that you know being funded over time because clearly you have set up a goal for 2030 now and by 2030 we want to become 17 gigawatt company for that uh, capex of uh, as you rightly said 80 more than 82000 capex is required with uh, 70 30 for thermal power stations and uh, 80 20 for uh, uh, renewable po uh, power stations uh, we require around uh, 22000 crores of uh, um, equity uh, we are going to meet this equity through the uh, profits that are, that are being generated and also the asset monetization program of the existing 1.4 gigawatt renewable capacity with this uh, these two we are uh, we are confident that we will be able to meet the uh, equity requirement and uh, the balance debt portion is not a problem because we are a, a triple star company so uh, uh, raising debt is not, is not a problem Okay, very quickly in terms of the Talabira power project contract decision, I think that is expected to be out today as well. Uh, what's the view? Yes, ma'am. Today uh, uh, is the bid opening date. We are confident that we will be uh, opening that and we will be awarding that at the earliest, and we'll start the activities at the earliest. Okay, and anything that you are looking to uh, garner with regards to asset sale, what's that target going to look like? Because the last I looked at was around five thousand crores via the one point four gigawatt renewable asset sale. Uh, what is that? You know, I mean, apart from that, what additions are we looking at? When we are targeting for uh, asset monetization of one point four gigawatt, in line with that, we already formed hundred percent owned subsidiary NLC India Renewable Energy Limited. and the process of asset monetization uh, of these assets to that company is already in progress and we are hopeful that in the next financial year that will be completed okay so my last question coming to you is what is that target uh, you know that you are looking at from a guidance perspective over the say if, for fy24 and 25 from a top line and bottom line scale uh madam exact figure i cannot tell but uh, uh, it will be much better than the uh, last financial year and last calendar year right That. right so to fi 24 and 25 will be much better than the previous two years is what we should be watching out for thank you prasanna so much for joining us on the show and sharing the views so clearly uh, the stock is going to be in focus as well taking into consideration the kind of gains that you've seen in the last one year and probably if 24 is going to be better than 23 and 22 uh, clearly the indication is that yes the kind of gains that we've seen will continue from from a valuation perspective it's going to be interesting as well and the, with the government's thrust on renewable energy and the kind of portfolio that nlc is building on that is something that could help garner the kind of gains that we are seeing with regards to this company but completely out of time that's all that we have on this edition of the small and mid cap show lots more lined up on the other side please stay tuned to ntv profit